Tov, everyone. At the end of this week's parsha, the brothers are faced again with how to deal with Yosef. Uh, that's really been the elephant in the room the whole 17 years that Yaakov was in Mitzrayim. But as long as Yaakov was there, they didn't have to face up to it. Because Yaakov was the center of attention. And they knew that Yosef would not do anything drastic against them as long as Yaakov was alive. So Rashi says there were two, uh, uh, two things that Trigger, triggered the uh, the attention of the brothers that brought them again to come to Yosef to ask for forgiveness. The first thing is that when he went to the funeral, <clears throat> when he went to Hebron to bury Yaakov, <clears throat> Yosef took a detour. And he went back up to uh, Shem. And he looked in the pit where he had been cast by the brothers. And he made the bracha, Baruch, Shosali Nes Bamokam So that disturbed the brothers because it meant that he had not gotten over it. That's the way they interpreted it. But they didn't make an issue out of it because they said maybe, you know, it's a, uh, it's a shtickle from kite. It's a, you know, we just, okay, well, yeah, who wants to acknowledge the nest? The nest is, we all know, is that there were snakes and scorpions in the pit, and that Yosef emerged whole. Then they come back to Egypt. They notice that Yosef does not invite them to share a meal with him in the same uh, way that he did before when Yaakov was alive. So then they realize that uh, the relationship had not been restored. Now, the question here is, uh, didn't Joseph realize all of this too? Uh, but Joseph is not as sensitive to them as they are to him. We see from the beginning that Yosef is not sensitive to them. He tells them his dreams. Who tells you to tell them your dreams? It's enough that you have them. And then you tell it to him a second time. And you interpret it in such a way that I'm going to lord over you. So there's a certain sense of insensitivity here that Yosef exhibits towards his brothers. It's almost as though he is antagonizing them. He's egging them on. We find uh, in the Chazal, 
that invitations to meals are very important. Or put it the other way, the lack of invitations to meals are very important. The famous story about the Churban Sheni of Kamsa and Bar Kamsa. He didn't send them an invitation. The postman delivered the invitation to the wrong person. And from that came the Churban. People are very sensitive about that for one reason or another. Yosef uh, doesn't notice it. They notice it. They notice that uh, they're not invited as often as they were. It's not uh, the same way it was. And because they are oversensitive and he is relatively insensitive, so you have this gap that exists between them. And that was the gap that existed between them from the beginning. They never com could communicate with each other properly. Because whatever they did, he saw one thing and they saw another thing. Whatever he did, he saw one thing and they saw another thing. They never saw objectively the relationship between them. So now Yosef attempts to patch it up. They come to him and they say, Forgive us for what was done. Whatever you want, you know, do with us. Yosef doesn't understand what they're talking about. Because truly in his heart, he does not bear a grudge against them. When he says, Alakim Chashova Litova, so he's, he's saying, Rotsam Hashem. That's what makes him the tzaddik, that's Yosef a tzaddik. So what, is, what are they talking about? So he speaks to them and he comforts them and he, uh, but the Mephorshim say he doesn't invite them over again. That bridge is never crossed. So they said, Lu Yistamenu. Perhaps he will hate us. Now, Lu is from the Lushan Ulai. And as we, uh, I have pointed out to you before, Ulai is like Halavai. They said, if he would only hate us, so then they would get it out in the open. But he's, he's too nice. If he's too nice, we can never patch it up together. You know, we can never speak about it. Because he says, he's talking in heaven. I admit. So it's a permanent tear in the Jewish world. Well, the Mephorshim say that the origin of all of the disputes inner disputes that have raged within the Jewish people over all of the centuries is only a replay of Yosef and his brother. So in the Haftar that we read uh, on Shabbat, 
the Novi Echeskel says there will come a day that they'll be bound together, that they'll get over it, that the brothers won't be oversensitive, and that Yosef won't be insensitive. But that's already a messianic dream. That's something that's going to happen. It undoubtedly will. But until then, you have to recognize. So if you deal with people that are overly sensitive, you have to know that. And if you're dealing with someone who is insensitive, you have to know that too. And that is part of the lesson that the Torah wanted to teach us here in the conclusion of the story of Yosef and his brothers. It's never healed, it's just patched. And therefore it has continual vibrations throughout all of the generations. Rabbi Hanania ben Akashi Omer Rotsa Kodesh Baruch Hu Zakos Yisrael Ufich Achir Belohem Toro Mitzvos Yenemar Aranai Chavayv Zaman Sitko Yagdil Toro Viadir.